Okay, um, how about one more of these expected values and standard deviation problems? Here, um, we need to calculate the variance and standard deviation of um, some investments. So, don't let it, like, weird you out because now what you have is all decimals and percentages in your distribution. I mean, they're still just numbers. So we've got some returns that are based on three economic scenarios. And the three economic scenarios we have down here are healthy, soft, and recession. And what this woman believes is if the economy stays healthy, her investment will generate a 30% return. The 30% return is simply her outcome. So under healthy, her outcome is a positive 30%. If it softens, she says her return will be 10%. So here's our softens, and our return, our outcome, is just a positive 10. And we've got a negative, which is okay, because outcomes can be negative. Remember, probabilities can't be negative, but outcomes can. So if we slip into a recession, she's going to lose 25%. So these are simply our outcomes or our X values. So we have to have the probabilities associated. We know that the probabilities associated are going to always equal to 1, and that's great because that's what we've got here. We've got 40% healthy, 50% soften, 1% recession. Um, so we've simply set it up just like we did before with the doctor or zookeeper question and turned it into a probability distribution. What we also know is that, again, that calculating the expected value of a distribution is simply the individual x up here times its associated probability. We add all those together. So we'd multiply, add, multiply, add. We came up with our total number down here. So that's what I have done uh, right here for you, is I've taken the outcome of a positive 30% times the positive probability of that outcome of 40%, prob the um, outcome of 10%, times its associated probability, and our negative 25% with its associated probability of 10%, and what I've come up with is the mean or expected value of this set of investments up here to be 0.145, or roughly 14.5%. So, you have to get the expected value because the expected value is the same thing as the mean in order to get to the standard deviation and variance of a distribution, you got to have the means. So, you, unfortunately, even though the problem doesn't ask you for it, you can't step uh, skip that step because you need it right here in this formula. So, um, let's move on to applying that formula that we did before. Hang on. Okay, so I've got. Okay, so I've got what I think I need down here, which is this formula that we used before. Remember that the variance is going to be this part of the formula inside. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So remember, you got to go through the variance to get to the standard deviation. So we're just simply going to plug in this formula again. Remember, it's going to be x minus mu. We're going to square that. Once we get x minus mu squared, we're going to go back, pick up the individual probability of that particular x or outcome. Big sigma here means sum them all up. Then I'm going to stop at the variance, give you that number, because that's what you asked me to calculate. Then I'm going to get, take the square root of it and come up with a standard deviation. So let me just walk you through real quick how I plug this in, and then we'll be done. Hang on. All right. You can see here I've got my individual x's. Remember, those are my returns that I picked up from up here. 
these are my X's. These, um, I don't know why that doesn't want to cooperate. Um, oh, I know why. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. That was a little user error right there this morning. Um, it's like Monday morning, the 4th of July, so I'm already in firecracker mode. All right. Um, where did I get these X's? Remember, the X's are simply my outcomes, so I picked them up from right here. You'll see the 30%. 10%, 25%, and my probabilities of X that went along right out of up here, so 40, 50, and 10. Now all I've done is I have simply gone through and I, well, I let XL do it. I took X and I subtracted it from the mean of 0.145, gave me this column of numbers right here. So I simply took 0 0.10 minus 0.145 gave me this number, negative 0.25 minus 0.145 gave me that number. Now remember, because I've got to get rid of these, um, I've got to get rid of these ridiculous negative signs, because if I add them all up, these are going to cancel each other out. And so in order to get rid of those negative signs, I square my answer. So this column of numbers is nothing more than this number times itself, or that number squared, that number squared. Then um, my next step in this formula, remember, is to say times the probability of x. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up the individual probabilities over here associated with each value. I'm going to apply that right here. So I took x minus mu squared, 0 0.0240 times 0 0.40 gave me this. 0 0.0020 times 0 0.50 gave me 0 0.0010. This number times its probability gave me this. And then all I needed to do was that big sigma sum. This is your variance. It's this formula without taking out, this looks, this is supposed to look like erasing here. The variance is simply this part of the formula. Remember that the relationship between variance, right, oh that's terrible looking, and standard deviation, standard deviation is simply square root of the variance, so all I did here was to get my variance, I ended up this. In order to get to my standard deviation, I simply took the square root of 0 0.0262, gave me my standard deviation of 0.16. So what she can actually look at is based on this, the probabilities and these returns up here, she can expect an expected value to come up with an average return of about 14.5% with a standard deviation of 16% with a variance of about 3%. We actually use these types of calculations and projections in business for investment purposes all the time. So although it may seem a little bit of a hassle just to answer a question, there actually is a real application. Hope this helped. Um, thanks for the request and have a fabulous 4th of July.